We're honored to have Rob Shaw with us tonight. He's a graduate from USC with a Bachelor of Arts in Art Studio. Uh, he discovered palette knife painting techniques and he has been using and teaching this um, technique exclusively lately. He has had numerous individual and group shows in South Carolina galleries, First Citizens Bank and the Cultural Councils of Richland and Lexington counties. He was the featured artist at Haven's Frame Makers and Galleries. Rob is placed in many shows, winning second in NBSC's Oil Painting Invitational, best in show at South Carolina State Fair, um, and George, and he was jurored into the art fields uh, at Lake City, which is a big honor. His paintings are in many private collections, not just in the U.S., but also in Europe. And I would like for everybody to welcome our guest tonight, Rob Shaw. Hey, I guess I'm on, huh? You're on. You okay. demand. Um, <clears throat> Thank you all for having me. I know a lot of y'all, um, so it's good to see a lot of friendly faces out there. I don't know you. Hey. Um, so I paint with a knife. This is it right here. This is the special knife. Um, the, I've got a problem with my shadow here. Hopefully that's going to be able to avoid that. Um, I'm going to try to do a real fast demo. Um, it's a little painting, so it's kind of hard to see on a... Uh, like a Zoom call, but I will, um, I'll try to get it really close. I'm trying to get in the way too much. Um, I went ahead and pre-mixed all my paint. Mm, trying to get that shadow out of there. Um, so I'm just gonna be painting full speed. When we do the workshop this uh, Saturday, it's this Saturday, by the way, um, when we do the workshop, you know, we'll talk about color mixing and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, so the idea with the palette knife is that you paint kind of bold and fast. Just trying to move around a little bit so I can get the shadow out of the way. Um, so, and that this demo will be a great um, example of that because I'm gonna paint it super fast. I'm just, I'm just gonna talk while I get my camera straight. Um, the, we're gonna do a Mars scene. That's what I'm doing right now. And that's also what we're gonna do Saturday to kind of a marsh with clouds and um, this normally like when I do the workshop when I do my weekly class I um, I'll have multiple cameras going and I'll also do like still photos of things and put it on the desktop so you can see it we don't really have time for a lot of that tonight so I'm just going to paint really fast and hopefully y'all can see what I'm doing Hopefully I don't knock my camera over either because it's like right in my face. Um, but I think this will work pretty good. So what I'm going to do, what I, what I do when I paint a landscape or, and I, the way I teach it, I guess is the way I would say it. I paint from whatever's the furthest back, which is usually the sky in the landscape and I work my way forward. So in this case, it's going to be the sky. Then I'll do the clouds. Then I'll work on these like, there's like little distant trees here. And there's the foreground trees. Then I'll work my way towards the land. Actually, uh, let me correct that. Once I get to the trees here, I will, I'm gonna do the reflection of this down here. So while I have those colors mixed up, I'll go ahead and throw those down here. I'm also gonna do a little scrape technique with the water. So it'll give like a blurred look. I like doing a lot of scraping techniques. It's really effective with water. And um, I don't know, we'll see how fast I can do this. So. Um, here we go. Um, with skies, I usually like to fade like a dark to a light. And I usually start in one of these corners. I'm gonna start over in this corner with kind of a darker color. And I'll fade to a lighter color as I go down. And here we go. So when I load the knife up, there's a good bit of paint on there. I don't know how well that translates, but so I got a big old chunk of paint on there. And even with this little canvas, because it's just uh, nice and juicy the way it comes off. A lot of times in the corners, you got to work it into the corners just so you don't get that line. So I'll start with that and I'll start getting just a little lighter as I go down. And so, uh, by the way, um, I've got my own gallery now over here in West Columbia. 
um, on State Street near the old Antique Mall and Cafe Strudel. I know a few of y'all have come by. If you haven't, come by and check it out. Um, we've just started back doing the um, monthly art shows, like for First Friday. Um, and, you know, that's kind of iffy at this point. But uh, we've, uh, we had a good crowd last month, and we're doing social distancing, everybody wear their mask kind of thing. And um, we had a bar outside last last month. And, uh, you know, so people go outside, they want to socialize and drink. But um, definitely masks are required inside. And uh, we've got um, Christopher Lane, who's a really good artist for November. So that should be a cool show. But, you know, if you don't want to come out for the night of, uh, which I understand, you can come out later that month. It'll be out for the whole month. I don't know if a lot of y'all know him. He's kind of a surrealist artist. He um, paints some really crazy stuff, but he um, he's pretty prolific. So he has a lot of stuff. And I, I haven't really seen a lot of what he's doing for the show, but I'm looking forward to it. A lot of times when I draw my picture, I don't draw it too detailed because I'm just going to paint over it anyway. I do start with the tone canvas, see how it's kind of orange when I started. And the reason you do that is because a lot of times there'll be little areas that you don't paint. Like there might be a little speck here and there showing through. So it looks good if it's like a, um, you know, bright, warm color. Usually you want like a contrasting color. And landscapes are usually blue and green. So orange is a great color for that. I'm just going to skip down below the clouds now. Used to, I would go ahead and just paint the whole sky and then do the clouds on top. But Rob, there's a, a question. Do, are you using any medium? No, I just use oil paint straight out of the tube. I like Windsor Newton paint because it's pretty consistent. You know, all the colors have the same kind of body to them. And if you use medium, it makes it kind of runny where it's you know, you don't have to use a spoon to get it to the canvas. So I, um, I just use the straight paint and lots of it. And we have a second question. The, um, Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I was gonna yeah, say, we ahead. have a second question. When you get a minute and have the right time, could you hold up the palette that you prepared in advance? They would like to see it. Can you see that? That's pretty confusing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I basically just made my uh, sky colors, my ground colors, my marsh colors. Let's see if I can get this camera back in here. I got more lights to turn on too. Um, let's see. So, and I haven't even done any blending yet. I um, sometimes I'll blend these things. Sometimes I'll leave them as is, just laying you know, color on top of color. I like it when I already have some paint on here. The paint goes goes on much smoother on top of other paint. Like when you're painting on top of the canvas, it can be a little dry feeling. But when you um, when you've already got some paint down, it's much more buttery. So I like um, go ahead and getting some paint on the canvas and then put more paint on top because it's it's real buttery and smooth. Uh, you know, once it already has some paint on it. Got more of what I'm doing here. I'm just blasting through this sky. And normally I paint fast. I wouldn't paint this fast on the regular painting. I'm just trying to do it real fast for y'all to show off a little bit. And so y'all don't stay here all night. All right, so that's the sky. Here comes the clouds. It's like a big old thunderhead. So um, I will like a bright. This is this is a color I like a lot of landscape. This is a monster and flesh tint which is like absolutely horrible for painting portraits or any flesh tones, but 
I like it for landscapes because it's a nice pink color. You could easily mix this color. But um, I like using it for landscapes. It's just like the perfect tone of pink. See that big old, that was two strokes, you know, like, like fist size strokes, like big old strokes. And that's the key to palette knife painting is, you know, don't use the tip and make a hundred little strokes to make that. Like load up your knife and make a big old decisive stroke. That's, that's the fun of it. And I think that's the part that some people have the most trouble with is loading the knife up and just letting it fly. I think a lot of people are scared they're gonna mess up a canvas or something. But canvases are pretty cheap. They'll keep making them. Just get in there and mess up some canvases. Rob, another question is, can you describe that size or number or something of, to defini definitively explain what palette knife that is? This is a gorgeous palette knife. This is a Holbein 6S. This is about a 60 or $70 knife, which um, is the only one I use. I don't use any other ones. Um, for the longest time, uh, Lowell Cornell made a great one that I used, but they've discontinued it. So, it was like a $5 knife. It was perfect. And that's what I got everybody to use in my class. And nowadays, um, I've kind of just, I'm kind of in between what knives to tell people to use because I, there's not one like this, like this shape besides this one. Um, and once people are in my class and they, you know, they think they're going to stick with it, I always advise them just go and get one of these. They have them at City Art. You can buy them online, but it's a Holbein 6S is the size. And this is, you know, it's it's a nice tool. It's got like the, you know, it's pure steel and it goes all the way down to the handle. So I, I thought they were kind of indestructible until I dropped one right on the tip one time and it just wrinkled the whole thing up. But, um, Unless you drop it straight down on hard hard floor, they seem, they seem to last pretty good. The uh, cheaper ones, they would always break after about a year or two, or after, after a couple hundred paintings um, at the joint. There was always a weld like right there. It would always break right there. All right, so I'm trying to blend the bottom of this cloud out. While I've got this cloud color going, I think I'm gonna go, just go ahead and do the water. Before I forget what's going on. This is just kind of the underbelly of the cloud. You have to, uh, when you're using similar colors, you don't have to wipe off the knife that much. But like when I'm changing colors, I use these little paper towels, you know, little cut paper towels, and I wipe my knife off a lot because you gotta, you know, make sure you got fresh paint when you're going at it. All right, I reuse up all my pink. I gotta mix up some paint real quick. No matter what, you can never mix up enough paint for the battle knife. It is just crazy how much paint it takes. So like when I'm mixing, use, use the bottom of the knife for everything. So like when I'm mixing up something, what I'm doing is I'm picking it up and smushing it over and over. And I just touched my paint. So um, you don't use the top of the knife or anything. It's all the bottom. And that's the way the handle's designed to keep your hand out of the paint. So everything's done with the bottom. You pick it up, 
paint with it, mix your paint with the bottom. So for this bottom part, like I said, I'm gonna scrape it just to get like a blurred look. So I have to be a little more precise on how I put the, the color on down here. Cause whatever touches the raw canvas will stick around. Everything else will get swept away. And y'all see in just a second how that works. I've done a lot of these 30 minute, you know, 45 minute demos. I've done them at my, my daughter's school before. I've done them at like, uh, you know, different tent events like the Rosewood Crawl Fish Festival and stuff. So it's always a nice challenge. See how fast you can paint one and if it turns out good. Rob, there's a question. Can you say again, how often is it you're cleaning your knife? Is it after Anytime I do major color changes. So sometimes it may be a long time, but uh, a lot of times near the end, you clean it off a lot. Like I just cleaned it off because I'm about to go more purple here. I didn't want all that yellow mixed in with my purple. So I clean it when necessary, which is, you know, whenever I'm changing colors. And you know, doing the zoom thing is okay, but it's not it's not perfect. It's you know, it's kind of what we have to do right now. There are definitely um, restrictions to it, like being able to see everything I'm doing, um, or maybe being able to touch up, you know, and actually do something on your painting. That's one of the big advantages of doing like an in-person class, which who knows when those will start again, but. Um, the, um, the biggest thing is just messing around with the paint, you know, like getting used to it. I usually tell people when they're first in my class, don't try to make a good painting the first time. All you want to do that first time is really move the paint around, get used to the knife. The knife is such an unusual tool for most people that um, it takes a little while to get used to, to you know, feel comfortable with it, to kind of let go with it. You know, it's not a it's not a number one brush. You know, you, you don't get into every little nook and cranny. It's more about the big picture. So another question we have is, how long does it take someone who's comfortable with brushes to get used to a knife then? That's a, that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> I guess it depends on how hard you're holding on to your brush, you know? Um, it is not a brush. And if you want it to be a brush, it'll never be a brush. Um, I heard when I was in, I don't know if it was high school or college or right in those areas, I took a watercolor class from somebody who was really good. And they said, you gotta paint 500 watercolors before you, before you know what you're doing, you know? So I would say if you do 500 palette knife paintings, you'd, you'd be pretty good at it. And you could do that in six months, probably. That's my, uh, that's my answer. Some people just give up on it too easy. Like it's, um, it is so loose, you know, it's, it's not a not a um, super detailed thing, and if you go big, like if you do a big palette knife painting, you can get detail because you know the details are bigger. But um, it's never going to be a brush. I was never one to like like all the like to do like a pencil drawing and shade something for hours and hours to get like a 
you know, a sky or something. I was always too impatient for that. And I think that's why I like the knife because it is fast. Like you can you can cover some area really fast. I've had people, kind of like I just said, you know, the first one, don't try to do a, a good one, just try to get used to it. A lot of times that's people's best painting because they're actually loose. I think people try to get too tight with the knife and uh, they get real stiff paintings. All right, I think this is about ready. So I'm putting this on extra thick because I'm about to scrape it off. Another question is, are you using acrylic or oils? Oils. Could you do it with acrylics? I don't like it. The acrylics dry too fast. All those paints I mixed earlier would be dry right now. You know, um, even, even with open? Well, I don't know. I don't use acrylics, so I can't answer. I don't know how fast open acrylics dry or using mediums. Um, I've had people that just, you know, are acrylic people and want to do acrylics in my class and I don't think they ever enjoyed it. Just cause it's, it's just different. Like three hours from now, I can go back and mess with this, you know, cause it'll still be wet. This painting will be wet for a week. You know, it'll, it's on there so thick. Um, it's kind of a problem sometimes how long it takes for it to dry cause it's on there so thick. But that helps when you're when you're um, in the middle of it. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to scrape this water. So I'm going to scrape this whole area down here off, and hopefully the canvas doesn't fall on the ground. All right, so I picked up a bunch of paint. There it is. I'm going to wipe that off, and I'm going to do the next line down. I got a little bit of the sky too. So I'm too I think oils are the best with a palette knife. You know, acrylics are good for certain things. All right, see that? It's like a kind of a blurred version of the top. I like doing that with water because it gives it just a cool, like kind of glassy, slick look. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna do the distant trees now, these very far trees. Trees like that. You know, they're green, but they tend to be bluer in the distance. So I'll make them of exaggeratedly blue. I'm definitely done like more refined paintings with the knife, but um, even those are pretty loose. Can y'all see that? The closer I get to the painting, the further it pushes me out. I think we could see the painting pretty well. Okay. I'm going to do this little sliver of land back here. And I think like anybody who's, you know, can draw and can paint. I mean, I think you can jump around from medium and stuff like, like I'm not a watercolorist, but if, but if I'm trying to do a watercolor, I can, I can do one. It's just not a master watercolor, you know, it's like, because I'm still kind of, you know, trying to figure out how to do it. Like I can make one that looks pretty good, but it doesn't have that real nice flow that, a, you know, someone who's really comfortable with watercolor could do. So I think the same thing's true with a knife. Like, I think someone who knows how to paint could do pretty good with a knife, but it would take a while to get like, you know, super comfortable with it where you have total control over what you're doing.
Always try to like do things in the least amount of strokes as possible. And then I'll try to, I'll move on fast, but then if I, at the end, I'll look at it all and go back and touch up a couple little places, but not the whole thing. I don't want the whole thing to be super tight. We have another question that says, do you think a, be a beginning painter could do this? Um, yeah, I mean, everybody's gonna be a beginner Saturday. You know, it's, I guess, there might be some people who've done it with me before, but um, I guess if you're a beginner painter, you're a beginner at whatever you're doing. So I'm sure it's, Funny, you know, kind of just talking out of my head here, but everybody thinks they can paint with a brush because that's what everybody's been given all the time. Most people really don't know how to paint with a brush either, you know, to really load it up and paint thick with it and be confident with your soaks and leave strokes there, not blend everything to death out. So um, I think there's really not a big difference in the knife and a brush if you're using a brush right. You know, like brushes are made to just be loaded up and put juicy paint on and, you know, see leave strokes behind and, you know, look real painterly. So um, if you paint that with a brush, I think you'll be great with the knife. And also, even if you don't become a knife painter, it's just the experience of using different tools, you know, can, can help you grow. When I first started doing it, I kind of came across came across it by accident because I was um, painting with brushes and all kinds of stuff. But I um, I would mix my paint with my palette on the palette, you know, with my palette knife on the palette. And I always I noticed that my um, my marks and stuff that were on my palette were nice. I liked them, you know. And I was struggling to make nice marks with my brush. So I just um, slowly started doing the uh, palette knife, just in little areas of my painting. So it was kind of, and then it became where I was doing half and half, kind of half brush, half palette knife. And then eventually I just got to where I was doing all palette knife because I noticed that those were my best paintings, the ones that had the uh, more of the palette knife work in it. So um, you can definitely do a hybrid thing too. You know, if you're if you really like brushes, but want to have some bolder paint application or whatnot. Or if you're just, you know, a little tentative about going all the way, you can um, definitely do a combo. There's people all the time in my class doing a hybrid method, hiding their brushes, you know, pulling them out when I'm not looking, you know, which I don't care, but I always give them a hard time. Another question is, do you see more often people start with brushes and go to knives or the other way around? I think everybody starts with brushes. Just because, you know, that's the traditional, like when you're in school, that's what you use. I would do it on time. I don't know. My phone is my time and I'm using it for the video. I think, I think we're fine. Okay. I'm coming in with some even, these trees are pretty dark, but I'm coming in with even darker at the bottom to give me some shadow. I might would have chosen a little different green for this. If I had a lot of time, this is a little bit of a bold green. Another question is, could you talk a little bit about how you choose your palette and warms versus cools? Um, 
Well, I mean, just the, you know, the, the colors that I use, I like to have a warm and cool of each color. Um, I like to keep a pretty minimal palette as far as, you know, not a lot of extra colors. Uh, I do white, cerulean blue and French ultramarine. So that's my cool and warm blue. I like a viridian green because you, you can mix about any green there is, but viridian green is kind of a hard one to mix. It's got a real, um, makes a great turquoise color. So I like viridian on the palette. Um, I'm in between, I always like a kind of a brownish color, but um, I've been using yellow ochre for a while. And I, I'm, I don't know, I'm starting to lean more towards like a burnt sienna for my brown. Just because the yellow ochre is kind of a dull, dead color. So, you know, my palette changes a little over time. Um, after that, I go, um, I like a cad yellow pale. And then um, Windsor Newton's cad yellow is pretty orange. So I do the cad yellow pale and the cad yellow, which is, so one's like a primary yellow and then one's more like an orangey yellow. And, um, Then I usually use a lizard and crimson. My reds are kind of weird. You know, you don't use a lot of reds in landscapes. So I have about three reds that I just keep in my paint box. I use an alizarin and crimson. I like permanent rose because it makes a beautiful pink. So I'll keep that one around. And then, um, you know, cad, you gotta have a cadmium red for that super bright red. And that's about it. I mean, you know, I keep Payne's gray and flesh tint in the box, but. I rarely pull them out. You can make like really dark colors just by mixing up like a lizard and viridian and maybe a little French ultramarine blue. You can almost make a black that way. I, I hardly ever use black unless I'm just doing like a black painting for some reason. We, uh, Kate Heald asks, uh, he says, you used to use a fair amount of raw sienna to naturalize your colors. Do you still do that? No, I used to use raw sienna a lot and they were actually calling it rob sienna for a while because i used it so much um but i got when i was doing more of the scraping stuff like what I did at the bottom raw sienna is very like greasy and it would just all wipe away hmm. so i realized as i started doing more of the scraping that i didn't like raw sienna quite so much um so then i switched to yellow ochre and now i'm finding that i'm getting tired of yellow ochre too so I don't remember the last time I used raw sienna just because it uh I do so much scraping these days that it uh just doesn't work. It, it it's real greasy, it just wipes away. So I like uh yellow ochre for the time being, but uh like I say that's kind of changing. Burnt sienna is a good color. You know, you can mute it down, you can you can add some white and yellow to it and you pretty much achieve a yucky yellow ochre or raw sienna type of color. I get this tan and now I'm putting a little bit of green in it. A lot of times, you know, you may spend five minutes mixing up your color. You spend about 30 seconds putting on the canvas. But um, that first time you put that color down, if it's not right, take a break, go back and fix it. You know, just because you spend a lot of time mixing something doesn't mean it's right. So um, and a lot of times things will look different on the palette than they do on the canvas. So if I, that first stroke, I always look at it make sure that's what I was going for because whatever it is like if your I guess if your palette's toned a certain way and your canvas is toned another way it can look totally different and maybe it's the light too like the canvas is upright and the palette's uh flat but sometimes they're just way off it looks it looks light or something it looks like the right value on the palette and then you put it on the canvas and it's not So just because you spend a lot of time mixing the color, don't feel, you know, don't feel like you have to use it. You can always go back to the drawing board, the mixing board. 
I'm gonna leave this pretty spotty. I don't know if y'all can see how much texture's on there. It's textured, but there's also a lot of my underpainting showing through. I like that. So um, I definitely, especially as you get to towards the foreground, I like having it thick and letting some of the uh, background show through. What did you use for toning your canvas? Um, super cheap um, craft paint. Here, there it is. The best there is. Hmm. This is just orange. It's just, it's just kind of what I had for today. Uh, but I like an orange. You know, it can be um, burnt sienna is usually what I recommend. But um, I usually mix all mine. Like I don't keep burnt sienna around and acrylic. I just, I'll mix some reds and yellows and make like an orange color. I like a somewhat bright uh, under underpainting, especially if it's going to show through like key spots. And so right now I put that on, it was a little thick, so I'm just using the tip of my knife to scrape some away. You can also use the tip of the knife to get that kind of seagrass look, like give it like little eyelashes. Usually what I would do step by step wise, like once I did the sky, I would take a photo of it and I would post it onto the um, like the desktop so everybody could see it. But it takes a little time to do that. So I, I figured with this quick demo, it would be time for that. But um, it's, it helps, I think, just so you can see it better. Because with the glare and all that, you know, you all get like a weird shine on this thing. Um, with the glare, it can be tough to see actual colors or what's going on. So in like in my regular class, I do a lot of double camera work and um, I'll take pictures and post them up on the, the screen. Edge a little rag in here. You can also do a great scraping away. Like if you make a mistake or whatever, you can almost erase with the palette knife because if it's on there thick enough, you just scrape off the first layer or so. And uh, pretty much erases what you got. And um, after the after my demo, anybody that wants to stick around, like if you're taking the workshop, or if you just have questions, stick around afterwards when I'm not painting, and I'll um, we'll just do like an open discussion thing. Especially if you're taking the workshop, or if you have questions, um, stick around. You're at about forty minutes in. You just just so you know. Okay. Yeah, I think I about got it. Okay. I mix up a color. Like if I'm using like a brown, like right now I've got this brown green I'm putting in. I was using it down here, but also all I've got on my knife, some could look good right back here too. So I'll just kind of search the painting for like, oh, where can I put some more of this? Because you want to tie things together in your painting. You know, you don't want just one color in one spot. It's good to have it, you know, things that relate to one another. So while I've got this, kind of brown going. I'll see if I can find a few more places to put it. As he's putting the finishes touches on, I would remind everybody if you have any more questions, please um let us know in the chat window. When you get out of the bottom here, and I've kind of rigged my easel because this little tiny canvas is hard to get to. Whoa. When I get down the bottom, I like to prop it out. 
and hopefully it isn't going to be disastrous because <laughs> I've got this big easel and the lit the ledge is too big like to actually get like with a brush it's not a problem because you can get in areas but with a knife you're doing a lot of these kind of strokes like this where the you know the canvas just or the, the easel just gets in your way you're like hitting your hand on it so um sometimes I'll prop it out I might even lay it flat on the um easel when I'm doing the the very bottom so here comes this grass and I'll try my best let's see let's see if I can get it. I might have to lay it flat See what I can do. Let me see if I can adjust my camera. Y'all let me know if I'm blocking it or anything. No, you're good. I'm, all, I'm always looking at my paintings. I don't know what y'all are seeing. Sometimes when I'm doing the one-handed camera work, I'll be you know, looking at what I'm painting and the, the camera will drift down or whatever. I'm telling everybody, let me know if it gets out of whack. Yeah, we can't see that corner of the painting. Okay. Slide it to the right a little bit. We should be able to, see. there you go. I'm trying to give it like a little window, a little opening right here. So you got grass on both sides. You can kind of enter right here and you know go up into it. So I'm putting this on really thick. This is the foreground. So this is the thickest part of the painting. I'm trying to use a few different colors. I, that first was like kind of an army green. Now I'm using, this is a lot more burnt sienna. And then I'll use, this will be the last few touches. I'll use a real bright, like highlight. Well, not real bright, but much brighter than what I've been using. Once I already have a lot of texture established, hopefully y'all can see this. The paint's a little thinner on this this time. There's a lot of texture right down here. I'll just very lightly, I got my knife flat, and I'll just drag it over the edge of this. And what it does is just catches on the highest um, points. And it so just, you know, it only hits the, the, the highlights, the real high spots. Ooh, and I did a, I did a mess up. So, you know, when I do a mess up the knife, I just take the tip and go back and kind of scratch it back out. Let me sit this down for a sec. So I had to wipe my knife there because it just got covered in that wrong color. And now, I'm just gonna go back a little bit more of that dark before I finish. A couple of folks are asking about the supply list for the workshop. So I will just tell everybody if you go to where you would, re would register for the workshop and, uh, and in the in the text description for the workshop, there's a read more button. When you click that, it drops down and you'll see the supply list and all the other information in there. Yeah, again, specific questions, just stick around. We'll talk about it. Because there may be like, oh, you already have some paints and you may have a color. You just wonder if, if it's okay to use and for the most part, it probably is. But uh, if you have specific questions about colors or whatever, just let me know. We All right, I think that's probably about good. I could beat it to death, but. Um, we, we have a question. Could you hold that closer to the, to the camera so they could yeah. see the detail down there in those grasses you were just working on? Yeah. Let's see. Let's 
I'll see if I can get it without the shadow of the light in it. I can't tell if the light's good or bad. No, no that looks good. And those clouds, you know, those are more finished painting. I'd probably do a little more of those clouds up top. But you, and within the glare, you can see the texture too. See how it's yeah. got some heavy texture right in that area where the light's hitting it. Yep. And you can see I didn't blend the sky. It's, you know, pretty, pretty big marks and stuff. Another question is, are you doing exclusively palette knife painting now, or do you still use other mediums sometimes or other tools? I would say it's 90, 99% uh, palette knife. Like, you know, there's, I like messing around with different stuff. Like I, um, <clears throat> a couple weeks ago, I did a huge abstract painting because I've got a big dartboard in my living room and I wanted to cover it. So I've got a hinge painting on cover and dartboard. It's like a 48 by 48 that I use acrylic, you know, with a brush about this wide, you know. So, I mean, there's there's always times. I'm a painter. I like to paint. So um, I'll, I'll do different stuff. I've done, someone was talking about flow painting before. I've done flow painting, you know. I mean, I mess around with everything. Um, but I guess when I'm sitting down or when I'm planning a painting, I know I'm going to, uh, palette is my preferred medium. Like if I'm going to, you know, paint something that I'm serious about. All right. Do you, do you want to explain a little bit more about the workshop and what's going to happen in the workshop? Yeah. So, um, hold on, I was going to do one last thing. And this is how I sign my paintings too. I just have one of these. I don't know if y'all seen this one. It's like called a wipeout tool. It's like a little rubber chiseled tip thing. I like to do this. I just scratch my name right into the wet paint. So um, it seems silly, you know, signing your name, but I think a lot of people struggle with how to sign their paintings. So this way it looks like my real signature, like if I was using a pen and it's scratched, it's like, you know, really etched into the painting. So it's like part of the painting. And uh, so I always like to show people that too. It's a great way to sign your paintings. It's always natural. You know, when you use a brush, it always looks all blocky. Like you're, you know, blocking it out. Um, so with the workshop, what we're going to do is from nine to four, and we're going to do a few um, exercises at first, like just using the knife, filling in like shapes, trying to get y'all to. I don't know, just show you the different strokes you can make with the, uh, with the knife. Um, there's only, you know, three or four major stroke shapes, you know, and, but you can do them different sizes, different directions, different ways to mix them up. So we're gonna do that first. Then we're gonna do, uh, we might do something really quick like this, like a little 30 minute painting, but simpler, just so y'all can like knock one out and like not be nervous about it and then move on to the bigger one. I hadn't decided yet. Sometimes we get into that little painting and people lag behind so much that it turns into the all day painting. So, you know, if I could really crack the whip and get y'all to, you know, paint fast, I'll, I'll kind of fill everybody out with the, um, the technique exercise. And then what we're gonna do is work on the, um, the main painting. I would say at least a good four to five hours. And we'll just do it step by step. What I do is I, you know, tell y'all how to mix the sky color. We'll paint the sky. Then we'll do, there's kind of a sunburst cloud kind of thing. So we'll work on that. And uh, so it'll be step by step. And I'll go back and forth and I'll say, hey, you know, show me your painting, especially if you're struggling. Show me your painting. Let me see what it looks like and give you some tips. We'll just go back and forth like that all day until we get, you know, we'll work our way to the foreground like I did. And, um, you know, just, I like the demo technique where you can see what I do and you'll be able to see it a little better when I have the two cameras and I can post pictures on the, the screen. Um, and that's pretty much how I'll do it, like a demo back and forth kind of technique. Are we going to be working from your reference or do we, should we bring our own reference photos? I've got a reference. So um, it works best that way, especially when we're on Zoom. You know, I can tell you how to mix the colors and we're all doing the same thing. So they'll all turn out different, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, at least we're all on the same page if we're doing the same thing. And I think you said yeah. your plan is to do 16 by 20. That's what I'm gonna do. And that's a good size. 
if somebody wanted to bump up a little bit, I wouldn't go any smaller than 16 by 20 because when you do a small painting with that knife, it makes the knife seem even bigger. You know, you can't give me small details. So 16 by 20, maybe 18 by 24 is a good size. Um, if you get too big, it's just it's just harder. You know, if you do it 24 by 30 or something, it gets kind of big to where it's hard to finish in time. There are people in my class on Wednesdays that'll bring 30 by 40s and stuff, but they're experienced and they, you know, they, they're more, more comfortable with it. There's another question. Do you ever use cold wax with your paint? Nah, I mean, I've got some. I've, I've, uh, I always forget to mix the mediums in, you know? I just like paint. I like mixing the paint. There, I don't see any use in it, mixing mediums with it, unless you're doing like glazes and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm just slapping it on thick. Um, I used to use, they, uh, they have a like a gel medium that's like the same consistency as the oil paint that comes in like oil paint tubes. And I'll put it on my palette, but then I'll just sit there all night because I forget to mix it into my mixtures. So I just decided not to even do that anymore. You know, it was supposed to speed up the drying time, but um, the drying time usually isn't a big deal unless you got somebody just sitting around waiting on the painting, you know, which I guess if you have a show or a commission, it can be a problem. But um, yeah, I just, I just use straight paint. There are people that use the, um, I can't remember what it's called. It's like, it's basically like a liquid, but it comes in like a tube. You know, it comes in a, um, you know, one of the big tubes like this, but it's liquid. You know, I think it's like liquid and pasto or something like that. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to speed up the drying time, you could do that. But I always forget to mix it in. So, I just do they need to have any special equipment set up for them to be a participant in the workshop. What you want to do is you want to have a computer's best because you have a big screen or the, a big tablet is best. Um, you want to have it, have your camera, computer set up where it's best if, you know, if I can see your painting the whole time. A lot of people don't want to sit that way. They want to hide in the corner, but you know, you want to have the computer where at least you can see it, everything that's going on. You want to have an easel of some sort, whether it's a tabletop. Um, you could work flat with a small painting. I always like an easel because it's propped up. Um, the palette, you know, this is one thing that is important. A lot of people will bring those for the first night. They'll bring one of those, like uh, the palette you get with the painting kit that has like the, you know, it's one of the French impressionists use, has a little hole in it and it's, it's about 12 by 16 and it's just not big enough. You know, the hole ruins half your real estate. You know, you don't have any room for mixing. This here is a, this is a 16 by 20, just piece of plexiglass. But you could use a 16 by 20 canvas panel or 16 by 20. It, the main thing is you need a big palette because you see, I used up all my space on this right here. And if you had a palette half the size with a thumb hole in the middle of it, you basically could only mix the sky color. And you'd all, all day you'd be wiping your palette off, changing. So I think the palette is the biggest thing, having a big flat palette. I've seen people use, you know, glass is a little more dangerous, but people use glass sometimes. Um, I, I like plexiglass just because I have it around because I have a frame shop, but um, you can get it at Lowe's or um, you could even use a board if you, you probably have to, you, you could just use a board, you know, if you had a board, it'll, it'll kind of soak up the oil at first until it gets broken in. But um, I just like a nice flat palette, something at least, you know, like 16 by 20 is nice because it's crazy how much paint you have to mix. I mean. There's another question about the, the reference for the workshop, Rob. Are you going to email that to everybody or how will they be able to see the reference to work from it? Um. Yeah, I mean, I can. Um, I don't have the uh, emails for the participants yet. And I think the reference photo was in with the um, initial, like, I guess, workshop announcement thing. Oh, it's that same uh, photo. Okay. So, but uh, yeah, if y'all if get me the participants' um, names, I can meet, email everybody the week of. That way, if they have questions, they can get back with me. Okay. And, Carol, um, Carol, will you do that? You want me to um, get the picture from him? 
Well, just email me the participants' names. I get well, whatever y'all want to do, whichever whichever way. I can run everything through y'all, or if y'all want to just give me the participants' names, we can do it that way. Just give him the names and emails, Carol. I think it'd probably be easiest. Oh, give them to Rob. Yeah. Okay, I can do. That. Then I'll, I'll. What I'll do is I'll just do like a email saying, you know, thanks for doing the workshop. Here's some details, and that way they'll have my contact and I'll have theirs, and they can go back and forth with me if they have questions. Because there's usually a few questions the week of trying to figure out finding the right knife is tough. Um, give me one second. I'll, I'll show you all a couple of different ones. While he's grabbing that. Does anybody have any other questions? Did everybody find the uh, list of supplies and supply list? Oh. Okay, so what you want is kind of a teardrop shape. See how this is like a, it's like a teardrop. I don't like the ones that are like diamond shaped that have like the, there's like an angle right over here. It's like a sharp angle. Cause what that does, it puts scratches in your, like when you're doing your sky, you get all these scratch marks from that, that jagged angle hitting everything. So having the rounded curve back here is nice. And really whatever size, like this is kind of a small one. And uh, see, so compared to like the one I use, like this is the one I use, and this is the one next to it. Same shape, really. It's just smaller. And then um, I think it's City Art. You can get one of these. This is a RGM knife, and it's um, it's, a, it's a little more pointed on the end. But it's it's pretty good size compared to the one I use. Um, you know, it's decent decent size. And uh, this is the one I used to love that we can't get anymore. This is, this is a um, low Cornell, it was the J16. And I mean, it's, just, it's exactly the same. I mean, they're the, pretty much the same uh, shape and everything. And but see, this one has the weld, like the weld mark there. And eventually this will just break, but you gotta do a lot of paintings before you break one. And then there's also this big fat one, which I think is a little too big. Um, see, it's even bigger than mine. But the main thing is you want a nice teardrop shape. But I think you can, I don't know what if Michael's and Hobby Lobby really even carry as many palette knives anymore. But uh, I know City Art has some. And if you, I think Jerry's Art Arama is usually pretty quick of shipping if you were going to order online. Okay. I mean, ordering think... online is a little, little iffy, a weekend, you know. Yeah, especially with COVID away. right now. Who knows? Right. Um, does anybody have any other questions? If not, I think Kay, you get the floor again. Kay Fox. Okay, so I didn't see any more questions. So Rob, so we'd like to thank you very much for your time this evening. Very educational and interesting. I'm looking forward to trying some palette nice myself sometime. <laughs>